do whatever he tells you. Hearing the call of Mother Mary, the Catholics of Udupi district have been following Jesus Christ for the past four centuries. Having been a part of the Diocese of Mangalore for 125 years, July 16, 2012 was a momentous day for the Catholics of Udupi district. On this special day, Pope Benedict XVI carved out the Diocese of Udupi from the Diocese of Mangalore and established Udupi as an autonomous diocese. Thus, the Diocese of Udupi was born. Most Reverend Gerald Isaac Lobo, the 12-year Bishop of Shimoga, was appointed the first Bishop of the Diocese and Milagris Kalyanpur Church was declared as the Diocese and Cathedral. Udupi Diocese started functioning officially from October 15, 2012 upon the installation of Bishop Gerald Isaac Lobo as the first Bishop of the Diocese. A pastoral plan for the comprehensive development of its faithful is currently being implemented by the new diocese. Udupi Diocese is the suffragan of Bangalore Archdiocese and covers the talukas of Udupi, Karkal, Kundapur, Hebri, Kapu, Brahmavar and Bainor. There are 52 parishes in the diocese with five deaneries that encompass Udupi, Karkal, Shirwa, Kalyanpur and Kundapur. With a Catholic population of approximately 65,000, it extends over an area of 3,880 square kilometers. There are 83 dioceses and priests, 42 religious priests and 236 religious nuns in the diocese. The speedy progress of the Diocese of Udupi has been primarily on account of the effective administration and far-sight of Bishop Gerald Isaac Lobo. He visited all the parishes, participated in liturgical programs and conducted discussions and consultations for two years in order to prepare the diocesan pastoral plan. In 2014, the Udupi Diocesan Mission 2025 a 10-year pastoral plan was prepared with experts' advice and implemented in 2015. There are 18 commissions in the pastoral plan and their functions are the same as those of the congregations of the Holy See. For the spiritual well-being of the people, the Holy Bible, liturgy, catechetics, small Christian communities, Youth, Family and Proclamation Commissions were established. In addition to educating the faithful on the Word of God, training them for liturgy and strengthening their faith, forming small Christian communities and nurturing them, preparing the youth to become future leaders, encouraging prayer, charity and unity among families, and proclamation of God's word among the people have been at their service for the past 10 years. Over the last decade, the Youth Commission has conducted a number of training programs. Leadership camps have engaged 1,484 youth from 45 parishes, while UCAT training has engaged 2,827 youth from 45 parishes. The Indian constitution was studied by 700 youth from 42 parishes and the Teze prayer service was held in 45 parishes by 3,110 youth. 1,759 youth received training as YCS office bearers, 1,455 youth received career guidance and 2,045 received career advancement program training. In addition to rural life camps, the youth received training in life skills and a greater understanding of Konkani language and traditions. The members of the YCS and ICYM participated in over 50 programs. Over the past decade, the Family Commission has helped the families and strengthened their bonds. Through the Marriage Bureau, 
780 men and women found life partners and 205 chose their partners family life training was provided to 8980 children from 8th to 10th grade 1129 teenagers from YCS as well as 2318 other youth the marriage preparation course prepared 3480 youth for married life 3068 married people attended enrichment camps for couples jivit counseling center has helped 469 people to resolve their issues and santwana tele counseling center has helped more than 500 people family cells were created in the parishes to resolve conflicts and create happy families the family retreat was attended by 5000 persons from five deaneries and 14 parishes furthermore there were also couples days fathers days mothers days widows and widowers days elders days family days and single parents days all these programs contributed to the strengthening of family ties for the spiritual well-being of the faithful the holy bible catechism and liturgy commissions provided instruction and training the diocese conducted a survey of its houses and provided bibles to 15766 families that lacked them a total of 25000 children's bibles were printed and distributed freely to the students of 4th to 10th grades 470 people studied the bible through a bible study course 78 liturgical training programs were offered to 8363 people the training programs for lectors cantors and the choir members trained 1920 persons to celebrate liturgy meaningfully and acquire the necessary skills training programs for the extraordinary ministers of holy communion were held annually and 360 new eucharistic ministers were appointed the camps jeevan jyoti jeevan disha and jeevan amrut were held to strengthen the faith of the children of the high school a total of 9 new books were published on liturgy and catechism over 40 catechism teacher training programs were attended by more than 2400 teachers several training programs are being conducted in each parish by the small christian communities with the seven step method and bible mirror method the small christian community is being built up the process is being carried out with the help of training teams ward animators and the diocese the commission for proclamation and evangelization offers its unique contribution in keeping the missionary spirit alive in the church missionary children societies have been started in 46 parishes in order to develop and maintain the spirit of mission among the children 145 lay evangelizers have been selected and trained in order to realize the motto every christian a missionary intercessory groups function in 42 parishes praying daily for the various needs of the church reverend father alfred roch a pearl of the faithful of udupi diocese was elevated to the state of the servant of god as a first step towards being declared a saint One of the most significant historical events of the previous decade is the transformation of St Lawrence Shrine into a minor basilica. The diocesan shrines include Valankani Shrine Kalmadi and St Anthony Shrine Kerekatte. A number of churches and presbyteries in the diocese were in a poor condition. During the past 10 years 12 new churches were built 11 churches were repaired 20 presbyteries were built and 6 new houses were constructed for the religious communities The Laity Commission serves as the public face of the church There are 5 lay leaders on the diocesan commissions Additionally 
543 ward animators and 476 ward leaders have been formed. Leadership training was attended by 815 laypersons. The social leadership camp by the Catholic Sabha has trained 258 people whose leadership skills have been noteworthy. The committee members include lawyers, businessmen, managers of Catholic cooperative banks, nurses, doctors and volunteers. 112 persons were elected members of the Grama Panchayat. A total of five persons have been appointed to government positions. 2,500 people attended the Catholic Sabha's Samudaya Otsav. The church's mission has been fulfilled amidst the people by the Catholic Sabha. Through the various government schemes, 2,219 persons have derived a benefit of rupees 6 crores 48 lakhs 44,000. The Christian Development Board of the Government of Karnataka has allocated approximately rupees 7 crores 79 lakhs 5,000 to 29 parishes so far. The diocesan women have been empowered by the Women's Association and self-help groups. 60% women serve in the parish and deanery commissions. Moreover, 58% of the ward leaders are women and 71 panchayat members are women. As of now, 5,481 persons have saved rupees 4 crores 89 lakhs 62,350 through 456 self-help groups, 50 mahasangas, 5 taluk okutas and 1 jilla okuta. 85% of the loan of rupees 27 crores 55 lakhs 67,700 has been repaid. As a result of this loan facility, families have been able to start their own business, give their children a higher education and take care of their basic needs. 6,039 women have received a subsidy of rupees 6 crores 80 lakhs 2,500. There were 6,327 eligible women who received a subsidy of rupees 5 crores 53 lakhs 36,955. A women's bank is the next dream of the Women's Commission. Its registration process will be completed soon. Training in human rights for women has been provided in 40 parishes involving 4,689 people. As a means of building positive relationship with various communities, women engage with various councils through their organizations and self-help groups. Sampada Udupi Trust helps the marginalized communities in society with its inspiring and innovative projects. During the COVID wave, 604 families in the Udupi district received an assistance of rupees 99 lakhs 21,624 through Sampada organization for medical services, house construction and house repairs. Sampada assisted in the establishment of a pharma producer company, Raita Utpadaka company, to increase agricultural income by 20%. It has also organized a workshop on biological farming methods, soil conservation and organic farming techniques. It has also established self-help groups for men and is planning to establish a men's bank. Through the Sampada Trust, the Commission for Ecology promotes rainwater harvesting and forest conservation. 20,439 water stabilization ponds have been installed in 5,436 houses. In 1,679 places, provision has been made to have the open wells as well as bore wells to be refilled adequately. 26 mini dams are being built. A total of 5,125 households have medicinal plants. Awareness has been increased on environmental protection through the programs such as Vanamahotsava, clean environment, plastic elimination and farming training in rural areas. 
environmental protection has been emphasized since Laudato Si Day in 2021. Udupi Diocese desires to ensure that every student receives due attention. No child should be denied education for any reason is the educational policy of the diocese. Udupi Diocese gives special attention to this cause. Education is the purpose of the Catholic Education Society. A total of 401 children from Udupi Diocese have been provided Rs. 97,84,145 through the ICTP scheme of the Sampada Trust. A total of Rs. 19,38,222 has been provided to 444 children. 97 children have received Rs. 8,1686 as financial assistance through various projects. 714 qualified students have received Rs 4 crores, 3 lakhs, 53,255 interest-free student loans through Educare and KCWA. Scholarships worth Rs 10 crores, 15 lakhs, 27,117 were awarded to 11,283 children and youth. Currently, there are 41 primary schools, 23 high schools, 9 pre-university colleges, 2 degree colleges and 2 technical centers in Udupi Diocese. Within the last decade, 2 state board English medium schools, 1 ICSC school and 3 CBSC schools have been newly established. The members of Udupi Diocese are protected by the Health Commission. Father Mullah Health Card and KMC Health Card subscriptions have helped 17,417 people over the past 10 years. The benefit they have derived through these health cards is around Rs 28 crores 71 lakhs 18,219. The district has 110 Catholic doctors, 813 nurses and 68 paramedics whose contact information has been listed in a diocese and directory. 3,595 units of blood have been collected from more than 300 blood donation camps. The bone marrow density camp has been beneficial to 4,818 people. A free eye checkup camp was conducted at 24 primary schools wherein 7,136 pupils were checked and 830 people were encouraged to seek medical attention. A COVID vaccination camp was held in 22 churches, vaccinating 4,341 persons. The Health Commission has organized awareness campaigns on personal hygiene, growth and hygiene among girls under 16 in 30 churches, educating 1,081 people. There are also health awareness camps planned in many churches. For the domestic and construction workers to receive government benefits, the Labour Commission educates them about their rights. So far, 614 drivers and construction workers have registered themselves. 454 job cards and 1,304 Kisan cards have been created. As many as 498 migrant Catholics in the Diocese of Udupi were spiritually assisted successfully. The Justice and Peace Commission works hard to ensure justice to the convicted criminals and establish peace in the society. It educates people on human and constitutional rights, increases awareness among them and helps them obtain and rectify their records. By using the media, the Udupi Diocese and Social Communications Commission strives to improve effective communication. 3,043 students of various schools, 5,141 children during Jeevan Jyoti and Jeevan Amrit camps and 6,012 people from 30 churches learned about the critical use of the media and rejection of fake news. 
Uzward, the diocesan fortnightly, has been publishing the diocesan and church news for the past nine years. Along with Uzward, journals like the diocesan bulletin for the priest Vox Nostra, Dakwal by Divya Jyoti, Jivit by Family Life Center, Motia by Women's Association, Amso Samudai by Small Christian Communities, and Sampada Sambanda by Sampada Trust are being published regularly. Besides the diocesan website, the Udupi Diocesan YouTube channel has been popular for more than a year with gospel messages, praise and worship, and interviews with experts. In order to maintain good relations with the district's working journalists, a get-together program is held every year during Christmas. In order to maintain good relations with other religious communities, the Inter-Religious Commission has been organizing festivals such as Christmas, Deepavali and Bakrid for the past 10 years. The Ecumenical Commission seeks to bring together the members of the various Christian churches and sects that have been estranged from the Catholic Church. For this purpose, the United Christian Forum was founded. Melagri's home, a home for the retired priests of the diocese, was inaugurated on January 6, 2022. As a part of the diocesan pastoral plan, the diocesan pastoral center, Anugraha, was inaugurated on January 13, 2022. Dear friends, what has been achieved in the Diocese of Udupi over the past 10 years is indeed remarkable and deserves to be recorded in the historical annals. Some of the challenges we faced along the way persist even today. With the guidance and inspiration of Jesus Christ, the Diocese hopes to achieve greater progress in the days to come and reach the goal. In addition, we have plans to establish more and more men's self-help groups, establish a bank for them, empower women, establish a medical fund, start farmers producers companies, promote farming in barren palm land, provide assistance to the poor and construct houses for the needy. Finally, we intend to build a house for the diocesan bishop before long. Our primary objective is to meet the people's needs first and ensure the availability of the government facilities to the deserving. We are working hard to achieve this goal. We remain grateful to all the donors who made these diocesan projects a reality. Bishop Gerald Isaac Lobo, who believes in empowering lay people as a mark of Christian leadership, is leading the Udupi Diocese forward. While much has been accomplished during the past decade, much more remains to be done. Communion, participation and mission are some of the milestones which will help us establish the Synodal Church in Urupi Diocese. It shall be our endeavor to continue our decade-long journey enthusiastically towards a better world until the church is transformed into God's image. This pilgrimage shall go on. <laughs>